Hello everybody and welcome to my first of one video. I'm only going to do one video on this camera. On the Wetzler Infra version 3. This is such a tiny camera and uh, I've not yet gotten to use it but someday, someday I will be able to. At any rate, this is so, so small. Um, this is a viewfinder camera. It has an extinction style light meter that is likely calibrated to around 50 ISO. And it has shutter speeds of bulb 1 25th of a second, 1 50th, 1 100th, and 1 200th on, in this camera anyway, a Prontor shutter. And the flash sync on this camera is any speed because it has a leaf shutter. The Wetzler Infra version 3 was targeted at entry-level users. It's inexpensively made. It has a uh, Bakelite body with stamped metal top and bottom plates. It has very limited usability, mostly for the daylight with slower films. It used the Rapid, which were also called Carat, K-A-R-A-T, film cassettes, which were en meant for entry-level cameras. And it takes 24 by 24 frames, not, it's not the number of frames, that's the size of the frame. It takes square frames on 35 millimeter film. As you can see, I have tried to make a carrot cassette out of a reusable plastic cassette with exactly zero luck so far, which is, this is right here is why I haven't used this camera, because I have not come up with a solution for how to use the carrot cassettes or rapid cassettes, whatever you would like to call them. This was produced by the Bernard J. Oler. I apologize right now to all my German viewers. Feinger at about, forgive, you guys gotta have some patience with me, I'm an American, please don't expect too much. Um, Bernard J. Oler, Feinger at Bau company, in Wetzlar, Germany. In the early 50s is the best guess that I've got based on the design and the looks of it and the, the overall um, build and, and interface. I could not find exact dates for when this was made. It was preceded by the version 2. It was concurrent with nothing. It was the only camera they were making at the time. And it was followed by nothing because BJ Oler seems to have either gone out of business or stopped producing cameras after this model. I'm not sure which. There's a surprising dearth of information about that company online. So as we do, let's go over this camera and its features. Now, even though it is an entry-level camera, it was designed to look a little bit nicer. It does not have strap lugs because it came with a leather field case here. And that included a camera strap that it, it would have used. So on the, st on the top here, we have the logo. Uh, Wetzler Infra. We have the Film Advance knob right here with the frame count window and the sh uh, that button releases the Film Advance. On the front we have the viewfinder window, the extinction meter window, the lens here. We have the, the lens has the aperture ring. We have the on the front we also have the lens assembly. Now the lens assembly has on it the flash PC port the shutter arming lever right there, shutter release button right there, the aperture lever is right up here, focus is with this front element, and if you go too far you can unscrew the front element and at least on this specific one it is very hard to get back in. I recommend not unscrewing it. Focusing scales, depth of field scales right here, and then a shutter speed adjusting dial right here. You want to adjust your shutter speed before you arm your shutter because doing otherwise can mess up your shutter. Self timer lever right here. On the camera's back, we have the viewfinder window and the extinction meter window. On the camera's bottom, we have the tripod socket. We'll take a look at the camera's inside again. And here we have the uh, film. This is the cassette where the cassette with the new film would go. Shutter window. This is 
we go. Film tension sprocket, and this also advances the film through the camera when you turn this. This is the only advance mechanism. Unlike other 35 millimeter cameras, this relies solely on the film tension sprocket. If you'll notice, there's no film rewind button here. That's because there's no rewinding the film. It goes from the new cassette into the old one, and then you take the, the cassette that's now empty and move it over to that side. Film pressure plate right here. And that is what's inside of the camera. Very simple inside. The um, cameras that use the rapid cassette system were designed to be very simple, mechanically simple, so they could be produced fairly easily. So the next thing let's do is let's look at how to load film with this camera. If you have the rapid cassettes, the first thing you need is an empty one. And the empty one goes on this side. And then the new one with the film goes on this side. Now I have not, you cannot use a 35 millimeter cassette that's been modified. I've tried every way I can think of to do that and it does not work because it is not sized correctly. It, the film jams coming off of here because of the way that the cassette rests in place. And I also have not found a way, I have not found any um, online available 3D printed models either. So basically, if you want to use one of these, you've got to get yourself a bunch of rapid, rapid cassettes, which are just a pain to work with um, because I, I don't know of any of these that were reusable, which means that getting the film out of this uh, often destroyed these cassettes, so they're, they're not common now. And if you can find one and you advance the film all the way in, then you've got to be able to take it back out in order to reuse the cassette. So, and you've got to be able to load this in the dark. They're, realistically, these are just a, a royal pain in the bum to use nowadays. But you would load the film by taking a new cassette, dropping it over here, feeding the leader into this empty cassette, closing the film back, advancing it a couple of times, and then going about your business and using this until the film is used up. To use the flash on this camera, you would connect it to the flash PC port right here via a cable. So you would need a flash, uh, an X flash would work just fine, which is any modern flash you could buy today that connects via a, a PC port. This is an older style PC port, but it will work with a modern flash cable. And any shutter speed will work for a flash because this has a leaf shutter. And with the leaf shutter, all the leaves are closed until you take a picture, and then they open entirely and reclose. And because that's the function of them, any of the shutter speeds on here will work for your flash sync. So let's go through how to take a picture with this camera. Now, there is one major challenge to using this camera for taking pictures. There's no exposure calculator on it. So you can use the extinction meter, but the exposure calculator for it was in the manual. So if you can, f so there is a link, I think, I think I have a link in the references that has a copy of the manual. And um, if so, you can get the exposure meter from that. If I don't have a link to the manual, that means that I don't actually, I never found the manual online. And um, so at any rate, what you would do is look through here. To read the extinction meter, you look through, through at the extinction meter window from a few inches back, and you read the number that is most dimly illuminated but still visible. So you might be able to see the extinction meter there. And I can't tell you by looking at the screen what number is illuminated, but that number would then correspond in the manuals table to different shutter and aperture settings. So then you would just dial those in, uh, shutter speed, aperture. You would then arm your shutter like this and take your picture or focus and then take your picture. Okay. So let's say you don't have the manual. You can then use the Sunny 16 rule. If you're using 50 ISO film, 
50, 1 50th of a second for your shutter speed, and f16 is a good baseline on a sunny day with the sun behind you. Arm your shutter, take your picture. But you don't want to use f16. Okay, so let's go up to one stop at, is 1 100th, two stops is 1 200th. We can close the aperture down two stops. One stop is f11, two stops is f8. So with the sun behind us, we could shoot as slow as f8 on a sunny day with 50 ISO film. And again, arm the shutter, take the picture. There we go. Focusing, you just want to focus however you're focusing here. You're uh, going to be best off using your focusing scales on your lens. Now the way that these focusing scales work, there's a number here, 16, goes down to f2.8, and then back up over on this side to f16. So let's take infinity and let's set it to f16 over on this side. That's this lens's hyperfocal distance. At f16, everything from infinity down to 1.5 meters will be in focus. The same is true with any other aperture. If we were at this exact focus in, on f5.6, everything from slightly more than two meters to as far away as five meters would be in focus. So basically to read these fo the, hype, the focusing scales, you figure out what your aperture is, and then you find that aperture on the, in the numbers on these scales, and then everything between those two instances of that aperture will be in focus. So if you're using f5.6 and you set infinity to f5.6, then everything from five meters to infinity would be in focus with this lens. It has a really good hyperfocal distance because it's a fairly wide lens. It's a uh, 35 millimeter lens. So to take a picture then, we've seen how you take a picture. You simply arm your shutter and take a photo. If you want to do a double exposure with this camera, it's really easy to do. The process behind it is you arm your shutter, take a picture, arm your shutter, take a picture. The shutter is separate from the film advance. You have to remember to advance your film after each photo, or you will just keep taking photos over the same piece of film over and over again. So after you take each photo, you push this button here down, and then you advance your film, and you just do that each time you take a photo, okay? That's the, me the mechanics behind a double exposure is very easy. The science behind it's a little bit harder. You need to cut the amount of light in half. The reason is because if you have your piece of film here and it receives an image that's a, a proper, properly exposed image, that's the amount of light it's supposed to receive. If it gets that twice, then you're going to have a very thick, dense, or dark, three words that mean the same thing, negative. The results of that are that if you print it in the dark room, it will take a long time to print and you'll have low contrast. If you digitize it, you'll have low contrast and lots of digital noise. So what you need to do is cut the amount of light reaching the film in half for each of the double exposures. So let's say that your proper shutter speed is 1 50th at f4. That's going to be your proper single exposure. If you take a single exposure and then advance the film, and then advance the film, that's a good and proper single frame. To do a double exposure, you have to cut the amount of light in half, right? So there's two ways to do that. You can either do it with a shutter speed by setting it to 1 100th one of a second. Oops, camera's upside down for you. Or you can do that with the aperture by going from f4 to f5.6. All of these are fractions, so the higher number is less light. Whichever way you want to do it, let's set the shutter speed to 1 100th, will work. Then you simply arm the shutter, Take your first frame, arm the shutter, take your second frame, and then you advance the film. Some notes on the Wetzler Infra version 3. Serial numbers for the version 3 are thought to have started around 13,000 and to have run to slightly more than 25,000. 25,468 is the highest serial number that I've seen and 13,054 is the lowest. 
The first models likely had around 1,500 copies of each produced, making them far rarer, the first models being the versions 1 and 2. This shoots squares on 35 millimeter, which is great, but because of the rapid cassettes, effectively unusable today. The earlier version 3 models had an extinction meter that ended in 7, not 8. This one ends, ooh, this one ends in 7, so this is an earlier version 3 model. These are, like I've said multiple times, very hard to use now, and though I'd love to, uh, I have not yet had a chance to actually take a photo with them and see how they perform. And that is it for this video on the Wetzler Infra version 3, a fun little viewfinder camera that takes squares if you can actually figure out a way to get film into this camera today. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera.